Previously on Jeffrey Dahmer, the original files. I, I, I still don't understand it. The Milwaukee County Medical Examiner will release more details on this case. And he came up with an idea that was more horrific than anything he had already done. He was 19 years old. He left home going to get a key made. He never came back. This, uh, I'm on 25th and State. And this is young man, he is butt naked, he has been beaten up, he is very bruised up. And he didn't really want them to die. And now, part two of Jeffrey Dahmer, the original files. People like Dahmer can get away with this easier because law enforcement does not recognize him for what he is. Uh, they're looking for somebody who's dragging their knuckles on the pavement and baying at the moon with hair in their face. Uh... They're not looking for Mr. Nice Guy, the quiet young man living in the neighborhood. But there may have been something more to why the murders went unnoticed. Okay, hi, um, this, um, I'm on 25th and State, and this is young man, he is butt naked, he has been beaten up, he is very bruised up, he can't stand, he's study fall out, he has, he is butt naked, he has no clothes on, he was really hurt. And I, you know, I ain't got no quarter on him, I just seen him, and he needs some help. Where is he at? On uh, 25th and State, the corner of 25th and State. He's just on the corner of the he, street? Yeah, he's in the middle of the street, he's done a lot. We try to help him, some people try to help him. Okay, and he's unconscious right now? He's he getting him up, he's, uh, cause he's bruised up, somebody must have jumped on him and stripped him or whatever. Yeah. The call is about this young man, Conorak Synthes and Phone. The voice is that of a neighbor, Glenda Cleveland, who spotted the young man trying to escape Jeffrey Dahmer's apartment. Dahmer had already tried to perform his crude sex zombie experiment on the 14-year-old, drilling a hole in his head and pouring in acid. Drugged, bleeding, dazed, the young man had somehow managed to get away from Dahmer and yell for help. The police did come. Jeffrey Dahmer told the police that Synthes and Phone was his 19-year-old lover with whom he'd been quarreling. The police went into Dahmer's apartment, saw nothing amiss, and returned the boy. The police then radioed back to the station, joking about what they had seen. The intoxicated Asian naked male <laughs> was returned to his sober boyfriend. <laughs> My partner's going to get de at the station. The hitchhiker's name was Stephen Hicks. He was just 18. Jeffrey Dahmer took him to his parents' house. There, he strangled him with a barbell. He dismembered the body and hid it in a drain pipe. It was Jeffrey Dahmer who gave those details to the police in his confession. So what have you been doing lately? Working and working and working and working? Working next week, starting uh, Monday. I go back to work Sunday nights. Oh, and, boy. Uh, so you go back to work this Sunday night? Great. Yeah. You look so good, though. You look nice and trim. Oh, that's good to hear. You I... look like you're working out. No. No, I've been surviving on McDonald's food mm -hmm. for, you know, since I moved down there. Well, you're looking good. Grandma was saying Thanks. that that she thought that you got quite a bit thinner, but you look fit. I don't know. Well, I've been surviving mostly on McDonald's food. It's just so much easier just to pop into a restaurant. But Yeah. Like I said before, it gets too expensive, and it does. I have to start eating at home more. So and of course, you woke up at what eight this morning, right? And then you you cleaned up your apartment really nicely, so you could show us what it looks like. Yeah, I want you to go over. You feel like it. It's, it, I haven't done any dusting or vacuuming or anything. I do that on Sundays. But, uh, uh, you know who the other person is there? That beautiful blonde sitting on the couch? Yeah. Yawning? And, and, and That's right. And who is this? Yes. That's Cousin Jeff. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like a bunch of satisfied people sitting around here. I have no memory of what happened during the six hours before uh, the last victim ran out of the apartment. I heard a knock on the door, and the police were there uh, with, with the last victim. Uh, they asked me where the key was to the handcuffs. I was, my mind was in a haze. I sort of pointed to the bedroom, and that's where they uh, found the pictures. And they, they yelled, cuff them. I was handcuffed and uh, 
it, it was just the realization that there was no point in trying to hide hide uh, my actions anymore. The, the best route was to help help the police identify all the victims and just uh, make a complete confession. On the night of July 22, 1991, Milwaukee police finally discovered the horrendous secrets that Jeffrey Dahmer had been desperately hiding for many years. Acting on a tip from a young gay man who escaped from Dahmer's apartment, police searched number 213 and found a chamber of unimaginable horrors. Human heads and a heart wrapped and bagged in the freezer. Hands and feet at the bottom of his soup kettle. Skulls tucked away in a file cabinet and this blue barrel stuffed with dismembered torsos soaking in acid. Dahmer would spend the next 24 hours confessing, telling in vivid detail of a murder spree that began in 1978 when he was 18 and ended with 17 young men dead. Why would Dahmer have, as he put it, created his own holocaust? How did he become so filled with evil? It would be comforting to point to an abusive childhood, an early life filled with hatred or horror, but his was filled with love. Jeff was the most beautiful, darling, sweetest baby, the nicest young boy. There just were no real signs uh, when he was growing up. Imagine your child grows up to be a murderer. Would you still love him? Would the guilt and sense of responsibility be overwhelming? Jeffrey Dahmer's parents have struggled mightily to understand what might have gone wrong with their child. His father's search for an explanation led him to look inward, even to write a book simply titled A Father's Story. But his search may be in vain, because even the experts and profilers who've studied serial killers are baffled by why they do it. There doesn't seem to be any indication in any of the serial murderers that something external makes them want to kill. It's as if something is thrown, a switch is thrown, and they begin on the pattern of what their pattern will be. Maybe all we can do is what Lionel Dahmer did, look back and try to see what went wrong. As a young child at the beach with his parents, Jeffrey Dahmer discovered a dead crab. He examined it with a child's curiosity but later the curiosity grew into something unthinkable. Jeffrey Dahmer got bigger and so did his compulsion to look at the insides of living things. He began to kill them, satisfying powerful urges that he didn't understand. And coming up on part three of Jeffrey Dahmer, the original files. Police found parts of bodies leading them to believe the man they arrested is a mass murderer. Jeffrey Dahmer wasn't what he seemed to be. Master manipulator. Conman monster. Stay tuned.